there, I'm Ken, this is Canadian Retro Things, welcome. Today I have to do some maintenance on one of my computers. If you've been following my channel, you know that I've been doing a series of videos called my Ultimate Retro Advent Calendar. And during one of those episodes, I talked about this, my TRS-80 Model 100, and how I like to uh, use it for, you know, writing scripts and outlines and stuff like that. Well, funny enough, right after I finished filming that, something stopped working on this computer. So, if any of you collect the old computers like I do, you know that it's common to have to constantly do maintenance on these things because really they are 40 year old computers that were probably only meant to last about seven or eight years when they were built. So yeah, there's definitely a bit of maintenance having to be done on most of these. So you're wondering what is wrong with this computer? Well, I think I will show you rather than tell you. All right, we have the TRS-80 Model 100 ready to be looked at, ready to be fixed. But before we do this, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. If your maintenance job on that retro computer requires more than just fixing a few things, like, for instance, printing a new circuit board, PCBWay can help you with their $5 for 10 PCBs deal. And if you go to their website right now, there's a big Christmas sale going on. You can get up to $435 in coupons just by answering some questions. There are free prototypes for Christmas themed designs. There are sales in the PCB Way store and there's a lot more. See the website PCBWay.com for all of the Christmas sales going on right now, as well as how to qualify for all of these deals. So, here is my Model 100. Let's go into basic. And we can see, I hope at least you can see the screen here. Everything is working except the T key. That key was a little bit sticky before. but it's completely stopped working on me. So sometimes I had to press it down pretty hard to get it to work, but now there's nothing. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna do a bunch of stuff here. I'm gonna start with obviously the easiest thing to do and then uh, go from there and see where it takes me. If this ends up being something where I have to order something in, this will be a multi-part video. But hopefully, we'll get this fixed today. So then we'll just take the key off, get a little bit of contact cleaner. Into there. Turn this back on, go back into basic, and see that the T key still does not work. So now I have to take it apart. So if you're taking this apart, obviously um, it is just four screws on the back here, and then it's clipped in along the front. So you have to get something in there to pop those clips open. And of course, gently because older computers, the plastic get, tends to get more and more brittle. Then, 
I'm now into getting to see the keyboard. So you got two wires to disconnect here. Then five screws to disconnect there, and then you can take the whole keyboard right out, which is what I'm going to do to work on it here. Now we're going to test continuity on the key. So if we look at the keyboard, third row down, sixth key in. So that's, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. this is the third row down. That's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Which means these two points right here, um, these two right here should be the continuity for, that happens when I push the key down. Let's push the key down. Nothing. Just to make sure I'm in the right place, we'll try the key beside it. Okay. So. Let's test the traces here to make sure that they're working. Okay, well, what does that tell me? That tells me that there appears to be something wrong on the inside of the key. So I'm now going to have to desolder that key. So if I am reading everything on the board right, I've never actually desoldered one of these before, but these two points, as I said, are the points that um, make contact when you push the button. So they're connected to the button and the two points above it should be the grounded outer part of the key. So four points to desolder there. Use lots and lots of flux to get this old solder off. And there we go, the key switch is off. Now, I just have to carefully figure out how to get inside of it without breaking it. I'll be right back. All right, what I had to do to open this up was take a very small little flathead screwdriver here and push it up into here to unhook the cover plate. Cover plate came off. Now the thing is when the cover plate comes off you got to be very careful because there's a tiny little spring attached to the plunger and this went flying on me. I'm very lucky that I found it again. Now we can see inside here that there's two little metal plates that when you push the plunger down, it forces them together. So, a little bit of contact cleaner in there. We'll take an X-Acto knife. Just gently put it in between the plates Scrape it off in case there's any buildup in there to prevent it from making contact. 
do a quick check to make sure that I didn't bend anything improperly and that everything's making a permanent contact now, which would be very bad. Hi there, it's Ken from the editing suite. I just wanted to let you know that I was actually wrong there. What's happening on the internals of this switch is that when the plunger is in the up position, it's actually holding the plates apart and when you push it down, it allows the plates to snap back together. So without a plunger in there, they should actually be making contact. And they're not. So that's good. Now, we have to take the little spring with my giant sausage fingers. Put it back into place in the middle there. There's a little knob down at the bottom that the spring fits into. And then the plunger fits over top and just let me see here. Looks like it goes in this way. All right, now we shall set this down and see if it is now making contact. And it's not. All right, I have done a little bit more work on this. So I put on higher power magnification um, eyepieces and I noticed that it was really, really, really um, caked with uh, uh, gunk in there for, um, not really rust, but you know, the green stuff that metal will get. So I soaked it in some vinegar for a little while and I took some very fine sandpaper, worked it in there. I think it's working now. So let's put our spring back in. And a button. Let's see where we stand. Well, let's hope that is enough. Now I will carefully try and put this back together to hold the button itself in place. Now let's hope that it's not making a permanent connection. And it's not. So now I can clear this area up a little bit and solder it back into place. All right, it looks like everything is back into place. Lots and lots of flux. Fresh solder.
Let's put this back into the computer and try it out. All right, well, here we go to test it. Good. <laughs> There's a T, and another T, and another T. So we can now put the cap back on. All right, so. Looks like everything is working awesome. Beauty, beauty, beauty. Okay, well, there we go. The Model 100 is back in its complete working state. That's awesome. So I have to say thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you know what you can do with the liking, the subscribing, and the commenting below because anything and everything you do is always greatly appreciated. I'm so happy this is working again. Now I can get working on my next script. All right, I will see everybody in my next video.